Hello stitching friends! Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. I'm Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. I just wanted to share with you some of my finished items because I'm newer back into cross stitching. I have a lot more projects that are in the future as I'm gathering and enjoying things. I have one thing that I actually finished. So I've got one embroidery finish. A lot of cross stitch projects um, in the works, gathering things, and just enjoying. I am loving floss tube, loving watching floss tube, and just the fun of gathering. I am definitely a collector. You can follow me on Instagram. I am new. I probably only have like 30 posts at this time with Instagram, and this will be my floss tube number five. So I also have quilting videos, and next week I will do the quilting companion video that will go with this. So we'll talk about some of the quilts. And since right now you're seeing a different view of my sewing room um, than in the last one, I will be sharing this quilt um, with you on that quilting number five. And that's a jam paddock pattern that I changed. Um, so let's just get into this and share. I love seeing ladies coffee cups. I am a coffee drinker. Um, I love coffee and as I'm getting older and as I am naturally managing my anxiety, I am now on decaf in the afternoon. Eventually, as someone who's pursuing natural health, I know I should probably give up coffee. It's not going to happen right now. So I love seeing different people's coffee cups. I have probably had this coffee cup 15 to 20 years. Um, and so I, I generally only use it in the autumn. So there is the end of my cold black coffee. Here's something funny. Um, I, in my natural, um, I call it a journey, but in my way of looking at natural health, I started um, doing a different diet lifestyle. Um, two and a half years ago, if I ever knew that I would want to pursue it for the rest of my life, never would have done it because it was daunting just to think about doing it for a couple months, a little alone the rest of my life. So I uh, gave up for the most part sugar and carbs. Um, so because I'm doing the basic keto diet, um, I'm not doing the micros, macros, nah, you know, I'm just doing it as healthy as I can. Um, I was able to have heavy whipping cream in my coffee um, in the afternoons. And I started noticing that I felt horrible after I had it and I knew it wasn't the coffee because I have black coffee in the morning because I do intermittent fasting which is anywhere from 14 to 18 hours with no calories so of course cream has calories um, so about three months ago two or three months ago I tried having no cream in my coffee and realized hmm I can no longer digest cream. And then the funny thing is, I just realized that the last time I had a big bowl of ice cream, I felt sicker than a dog afterwards. And so now I guess I am lactose intolerant. Whatever it is, no more cream in my coffee. So that is my sad black cup of decaf, but it actually is good and I enjoy it. So that's about me and my coffee cup. Um, here are some finishes. So we're just gonna get in. I have things piled in front of me. I have actually two different things of note. So we'll see since I am very squirrely and I am distractible. And the view that I have right now, I am standing in front of my window and I have my whole garden outside my window and cars going by. Um, so I'm going to try not to be distracted, but I really would like to not have to purchase a light to be able to do these videos because I already have my room is jammed full. I don't want one more thing in here. Um, and I tried one of those ring lights on a stand. All it did was make a ring in my eyes and every time I showed something there would be the ring. So here we are, all natural light. And here is something else cool. I am so amazed and thrilled and gratified that my subscribers are, um, are going up. I have, I think, 2,600 and something right now. And to me, it is just, it is just like a circle of friends that just thrills me. And then I have views and, and I'm loving it. It really is very gratifying um, to do that. And I am 
I realized I was missing a lot of the comments because as I was looking at them on my iPad, which I generally do when I'm in my sewing room, I missed a lot of comments. So if I have not done a little heart or a reply to your comment, give me, give me patience. I know you will. You guys are such an awesome audience. I realize the desktop is where I'm going to see most of them. So um, as I'm reading my comments, and they are so truly amazing, some of them incredibly thought provoking, some of them tear provoking, and just so grateful that you um, you are sharing your heart with me. And I realize too, it is not just you ladies. I had several guys responding. And so I know I have viewers out there that are guys. So um, I am used to saying you ladies, um, especially because I'm kind of looking at myself as a lady. But um, there we go. I, I, um, I am enjoying this whole process and this whole um, way of discovery and figuring out who I can show myself as. Um, I pretty, you pretty much see the real me, all natural. And um, I'm not editing now. And I don't know that I ever will. I had a lot of ladies saying that they would rather just see the raw, real thing. And um, that's what you get. Because it is as if you were visiting with me in my sewing room. And that's how I want it to be. So getting back, cause, and I am very distractible. One viewer commented, um, because at first I had done the sleeveless. This We're in California. It's always hot. And... Um, and so this is generally what I do when I'm not working. I go sleeveless and um, I just let my arms flap. And then when I watched myself on one of my videos, I thought, oh my word, can't be showing that. So I was wearing arm coverings. And um, then one of the viewers was saying that her grandmother had large flappy arms and she would give anything to have those arms wrap around her right then. So I just thought, yes, this is the real me. Um, and in in the natural journey and in going without sugar and carbs, I've lost a great deal of weight. Um, so then you got old skin, less weight. And yes, I am working out. Not as much right now with COVID. Just kind of lost the heart for that. But this is the real me. So the real me is going to show something. Here is my finish of my embroidery. Just a nice, simple thing. I decided since I was going to get back into floss, I needed just to do a simple embroidery pattern. And this, I had shared the pattern. It's Calico Junction Love Poems. And I believe I'm going to finish it into a needle book or project bag or project folio. I am realizing that there are so many patterns out there that I want to do and I don't have room on my walls for everything. So that is going to be, um, and it's over dyed, um, just one color of thread. So that is one of my, that's my finish. And here are some other finishes. So when I was doing embroidery, and again, I shared in floss tube number one, kind of my story of how I did cross stitch in the 80s and 90s, transitioned to gardening, transitioned to embroidery, transitioned to quilting, and then I also do beadwork. Um, so I do jewelry making. So this is one bracelet that I made that I wanted to share with you. So let's see how best to show it to you. So um, this, this is a fun one. It's um, leather and it's got beads mostly from a place. I learned how to do beading from YouTube and then now I love the website. The shop is actually called beadshop.com. They are an online store and um, they have tutorials and they have tons and tons of YouTube videos. So it'd be fun maybe if I showed you just a little bit about this. If I take this off, it's called a wrap. So this is a three wrap and um, some of these beads were collected. Most of these are on beadshop.com, um, but a couple of these beads were from a neat place, several neat places in Colorado. My dad and I um, would go to the neat little um, little areas in Colorado, and he and I would get beads. So that was very fun. So I wanted to use those. So here we go. Um, some of my finishes, and I was glad to see that some of these patterns are still available. Um, because a lot of them are not as I've been sharing some of the old ones. So because I had my coffee, I'm very thirsty. There we go. Good to go. Now, here is one of my pillows. So this is um, an embroidery pattern. There are over dyed flosses and I think that center one looks like a pearl cotton to me. So finished it as a pillow, you know, just the one with a simple insert and this is still available. So Acorns and Oak Pillow, it is by um, 
by my hand and it is actually on country country stitches so oh it's not showing very well anyway country stitches online brenda gervais several of these items are still available and i have a lot as i was looking at my christmas items there are a lot um, that are Brenda Gervais and that are still available. So here is another one. I love seasonal things. So this is one, and I'm sure this was from, this was something I just pulled this out of probably a crap apple hill. This was years ago. Is that going to show? Yeah, it is. Um, French knots. I adore French knots. Um, my stem stitch is what I use. I do not back stitch. I use a stem stitch and that's just, what is that called? daisy something um blanket stitch around the edge so um that is one that i have and then what i do is i will just take take this out and replace it with this this afternoon so this is what i call needle punch but i know most people call it punch needle but i did look it online and other people call it needle punch too so that's why i call it that so this is needle punch i simply took a lizzie kate cross stitch pattern and Instead of the X's, when I, I found the pattern that I used to transfer this then onto the weaver's cloth, all I did is I took a thicker Sharpie and I traced her alphabet and so of course made it one line instead of the little X's. So there you go, over dyed cloth, um, pearl cotton inside and over dyed pearl cotton on the outside. So that's another one of mine and that is still available, Lizzie and Kate. I just saw it on one, two, three stitch. I think it's like four bucks. Here's another one, and yes, this is uh, Celebrate the Seasons, I think it's called, or Celebrate Autumn. This is also on Country Stitches Online. This is old um, embroidery and applique. So this was uh, fusible web that I did on the back. So fusible web, applique, aren't those cute? I love pumpkins and I love blackbirds. And then this, and yeah, what's that called? fly stitch. I haven't done embroidery for quite a while, so I'm going to be relearning a lot of things, but um, these are things that I need to put on the wall. So probably a little bit more, um, you know, I don't, I don't know like the correct word that people are using now, but when I did woodwork and this was back, oh, I did woodwork eighties, nineties. And we, I either called it country, primitive, or cutesy. So for me, some of the patterns that I used to do are what now I would call more cutesy where I like more primitive which is kind of like this that's that one I shared on um, one of my videos in the past and that is a um, sherry Payne pumpkin plaid pumpkins I think is the wall hanging I just altered it a little bit like most things that I do I saw this pattern the other day and then before I was gonna go and do my video I couldn't find it and uh, when I look at this all I see is this mess here that I created, um, see the, the splotches. So I would like to just look at that cute little turkey and the beautiful stitching around the edge and the beautiful fabrics. But all I see is that mess. And that is because um, when I put the, the, I trace the pattern on the fabric, I have been in the past using the wash out the water soluble blue pen. I did not realize, and I think either I tea dyed this after I stitched it and took off the blue marker, or I did that distress it spray. It was years ago. Whatever I did, it was my fault um, because I did not know that this would then show up. It did not show up at all until I went to distress it. But it obviously doesn't bother me that much because I still put it up. But I just live and learn, live and learn. That's that's what I'm going to do. If I'm going to do things distressed, now I will do it before I stitch. And I'm going to try to find a new way. Instead of using that blue erasable, there are a lot of other things that you can do. I'm a creature of habit and I do not like change. So what do you think this year has been doing to me? Making me pretty crazy. That's why I'm stitching a lot. Here's another product. And... Is it still available? No, this one is not available anymore. This is an embroidery pattern, Buttermilk Basin, um, and it's called November Folk Basket. I don't think that's available anymore, but this is what I have. So I combined that pattern, and then I combined my love of quilting and my love of flying geese. So flying geese and log cabins are my absolute favorite blocks. I tea-dyed this 
I would like to say I did it before I stitched, but I really don't think I did. And you know what? I can kind of remember doing this. And then at the time I stuck it in the oven to dry. I have no idea if that's what you still do. And then I called my sister and I was talking on the phone and I said, Oh, I smell something cooking and it's not dinner. It was my, it was my thing. Gosh, I could have started a fire. So you know what? Be smart with how you do your stuff, but that's how I dried it back then. Now, um, this is probably one of my favorite items. This is still for sale. This is Autumn Sampler, and it is by Crabapple Hill Studios. So a lot of the Crabapple that I did was back probably 04, 05, 06. Most of them are no longer available for sale. I love this, and you can see the details. You've got, um, and the, the window is shining right on what I'm showing you right now, but you can see the details. You've got wool right there. You've got my beloved French knots. Um, you've got, what do we have over here? Some more neat wool. And I love, I love, um, I love autumn because I love the colors of it. And I also like that it's cooling down, which is great here. It's so hot. Um, but I also love, um, Black Eyed Susans, just very country. So this was finished similar to what the pattern was. Here's the pattern, and you can see they have it in a pillow, um, but I just mimicked this edge there. Um, so very happy, so Autumn Sampler. Here's another one, and I know I saw this pattern. I had pulled it from the magazine, I saved it, but if I went to look for it, there's no way that I would get this video done. So this is another fun one. This was from a magazine. It is wool and you can see there's strips of wool for the vine. There's a button, there's buttonhole stitch. Um, but again, if I can find the pattern, I will add that later because I have a wedding to go to today. So that's gonna be fun. Um, but that is my wool pumpkin. Now, I have more stuff here. What do I wanna show you next? Okay, I have a friend of mine and she has been purging and cleaning because she has a lot of crafts. She has done a lot of things in the past. And she just asked me, do you want some stuff? Or if not, take it to a thrift store. So I went and I stopped and I picked up some stuff at her house. And it was two big bags of wool felt. Not felted wool, most of the part, but wool felt. And so I picked it up, but it had some bugs in it. And so it had moths. And so I just left them in the, the big plastic bags for a while. Then I put them outside and I do Young Living essential oils. I use them for my natural health. I use them for everything. And I know that the strong essential oils will also, bugs don't like it. So I got some sage, I think, and put it on a cotton around, put it in those bags and I left it out in the sun and it was like one of those 115 days. So those moths didn't have a chance as far as I know. Um, and then I decided, I got it out and I thought, should I just shake it off? And no, there was like, there was moth eggs and stuff all over it. And so I decided to wash it. And so I did what I used to do when I would get wool, even though something was felted, which means it has been shrunk already, um, wool that was already felted, it still tended to fray. And so I would wash it again in very hot water, put it in the dryer and then dry it the rest of the way with an iron. So I'm shrinking it as much as I can. And it was kind of hard because some of them were over dyed, most of them were over dyed, and I would see some of the dye come out. But I just thought, I can't, I can't just stitch and have the edges come loose on my wool. It's just, it's just not me. Um, so that's what I did. I did lose some of the color, but I did wash things. So that was the process that I did. Let me show you this amazing stack. So again, this is not felted wool. Um, there is a little tiny stack of felted wool. So this is real wool, no, not that one. This is real wool that has been felted, meaning that it has been shrunk. So these were some of the pieces of that. Um, so that's a small amount that was really wool. And then this is the huge stack. Isn't that lovely? So I washed all of this. So it is wool felt. So not as expensive, not the same as wool obviously solid colors. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with all this. So right now it is sitting on the edge of my room under my quilt that I usually have in my backdrop. And I am just looking at it and I'm thinking, what can I do? And I do like making project bags and I wanna make needle books. And I'm thinking I may do 
some project bags with that. Usually it would be probably kind of, ex I don't even know the cost of what it is. I know I've bought some in the past. I don't even know how expensive it usually is, but I have a lot of it and I want to enjoy it. And one of my other pursuits, and I haven't done it for a while, because again, I did this back in hmm, probably 05, um, 06, I was introduced to it at the Road to California Quilt Show. I also do needle felting. I think that's what it's called, where you're taking wool roving, and I have a whole box of hand-dyed wool roving. I got like, I'm a collector. I got lots of stuff, and I need to use them before I'm gone. So this is one that I made and it's obviously a little pin cushion. I did this and look at it at the back. I had to watch a video on like how to do this but um, this is just a piece of wool on the back and I can stick my needle. Um, usually I will use this when I'm sewing and I can just stick a needle in there. Wool sharpens needles. So that's that and then it goes on this. This is usually full but they're on a bunch of project bags right now and so this is what I did. This is how I finished them. Um, so you can do anything. You know, ladies, I, I hope you can get creative and you can see this and you think, I want to do it. Put anything in the top. You just find a video. I'm not good at tutorial videos. So I just found a tutorial video on how to do this. And it is stuffed. It is put on here. And there is one way that I like to store things. Here's something else fun because obviously I did a couple of them when I did that. So this is another one. These are really lovely. I think these are what you might use with silk. They are, my sister gave me a sweet little box of them. Um, they are, I believe they're called silk needles, um, but they're by Clover, and I love the little colors because to me that's more country, more prim primitive. They're yellow and blue. So again, another one, and oops, what do I have in here? So I have my pearl cotton, and again, the bottom, oops, see, the bottom really has needles because this is what I use it for. Um, I've got my little um, thimble. I think these are by Colonial Needleworks. I love these as my little thimble things. I've got, this is an, oh, there go my arms again. Um, this is something that I got, uh, Peacekeepers, I don't think you're going to be able to read it. It's called the Ultra Fine Threader. And because I applique and I use the Peacemakers tiny hand applique needles, the, the eyes are those needles you can almost not see, so trying to get the thread through it. These are the thinnest needles, the thinnest needle threaders that you can get, and I like it. Um, and then here's something else cool. This is what I, I use the size 12, generally size 12 Baldoni um, pearl cotton for hand quilting. And that's what I have this in here for. This is one of the quilts I'm working on that is hand quilting. And I was just sharing that I wish I could figure out a way how to make this not happen. I had several commenters telling me where to go to Lisa Bonjean from Primitive Gathering. Had a very short video. I'll link it below. Um, a very short video on how to keep that on top and it was great I loved it then here's something else fun I am a lip gloss girl and I am a lip balm girl so this is something that I made all natural um, beeswax carrier oil which is a vegetable oil and essential oils and so I make my own lip balms um, which is just a fun thing because you know what if you can make something why not I love it okay Let's see if I can follow my list. Let me take a drink for a minute. Get my list going. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to share at the very beginning and I didn't. Cynthia Brew at Stitching in the Light, that's her floss tube channel. She, with the help of Christy at Crosshatch Quilts and Olivia at um, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, they are co-hosting the great pumpkin sal. So sal is stitch along. I recently learned that. And that is going in conjunction with an amazing fundraising effort um, for Freedom Shield. Freedom Shield, is that the whole entire name? Freedom Shield. Freedom Shield. Uh, Freedom Shield Foundation. If you go to Cynthia Brew, I will, I will link it in the bottom, but it's um, Stitching in the Light. And you just search for her um, video and it's hashtag the great pumpkin SAL. She will tell you about the great pumpkin SAL and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do for that and I need to hashtag it. But more importantly, um, more importantly than stitching is the foundation, Freedom Shield Foundation. I just, before I did the video, I knew I was going to donate, but I thought may as well see how easy it is to donate. I went on their website 
I watched a small amount of information. I knew what it was for. It was to help rescue and restore. See, already I'm getting teary. <clears throat> it's to help rescue and restore those caught in the sex traffic trade. I just looked at a stat and I'm going to not cry. Um, the stats that they had, 50% are children. Um, and if you just, you go, you look, um, because I knew if I was going to do this video, I couldn't read all the information before I did it because I'd be bawling because it touches my heart. And I think every mother, um, has always had that terror of her child being taken and, um, used wrongly for something. And, um, and I did. And that's why I was a stay at home mom. I was with my kids. The neighbor kids were always at my house. I was always watching. I gardened all the time because when they were out front, I was out front gardening. So, um, go check it out. Um, it is a very worthwhile cause. You will get a receipt. Very easy. I did my donation. Uh, and when I was thinking about it, I thought, well, how much do I have to donate? And then I thought, here was a reality check that I did. I just gotten into cross stitching in the last two months. I have been collecting. I've spent a lot of money getting cross stitching stuff, beautiful stuff, patterns, floss, linen. I spent a lot of money. And as I was thinking, gee, how much do I have left to donate? Uh, God just touched my heart and I was even more generous as I clicked that button and I thought of what if it was my kid? What if it was a friend of mine that I knew? What if it was my friend's kids? And I was generous. So people, I would just, I'm saying people because I'm trying not to say ladies, stitching friends, be generous. It's an amazing foundation. Um, you will get a receipt tax deductible. So go visit her website. No tears. Um, I was able to do something and that's what Cynthia wanted to do. She wanted to have a heart of bringing the love of stitching to the next level and to help an amazing foundation. So go do that. So in the sense of doing that, let me show you with you my next stack. Um, I really would like to keep this video. I wanted to do a half hour to 40 minutes. So now I was just saying, eh, maybe 45. I do need to end this eventually and I've got this stack. So um, this is what I want to share. I have been really fascinated with project bags. And again, my schedule got pretty busy. So the last video that I did was two weeks ago and I haven't had tons of stitching time. I've had tons of time to do some things, but more things that I need to done rather than stitching that I wanted to do. So here's a project bag. I have tons of fabric, um, yet I don't have big chunks of fabric and sometimes I just can't bear to take it apart. Look at here's, um, let heaven need nature sing. I'm, I'm kidding this together. That's an upcoming one, but I loved the idea of the deer being in like the moose thing. So I like matching all the bags. I'm getting a bit obsessed with thinking every project must have a matching bag. I need to get over that because otherwise I'm never going to get any quilting done. So I was, I was thinking about myself. I'm a collector. I collect fabric. I collect lots of stuff. And I love looking at them. Someday, after we paint and texture my room, my husband's going to help me with that this winter, um, because I said I really want to give a sewing room tour. Um, my room is small. I think it's like 12 by 9, something like that. Not huge, but it's, it's all mine, and I jam as much stuff as I can in here. And I love looking at everything. I have stuff everywhere, on the walls everywhere, everywhere I see. Even out the window, I see my garden. So I love looking at things. And I'm a collector of fabric. So I have a closet full. And because my sister and I were blessed with being able to inherit my mother's stash of fabric, I have also now a whole dresser full of fabric. So I'm not short on fabric, even though most of them are smaller pieces. Riley is sure that the male lady that already went by might pose a danger to me. So hopefully he will stop barking soon. Um, so I was talking with a friend of mine and we were working on a project and I had a jelly roll, which is two and a half strips of a whole line of fabric, usually 40 strips. And I needed to cut it down to one and a half inches. Oh, neighbors walking by. Um, and so I needed to cut it down and it was like, oh, I just hate wasting that one inch strip that I cut off. Oh, someone's coming to the door. There goes Riley. Um, so I hated to cut off that one stitch because I thought, what if I can't use it? And my friend was laughing and she said, you got tons of fabric. What's the big deal? And I said, oh, I know, but I treasure my fabric. I love my fabric. And so as I was thinking about that, I thought, am I a fabric hoarder? 
Um, I like to think of it in more of a positive way. I am a fabric collector and I am a fabric treasurer. Um, and so that's, that's just what I do. So as I'm trying not to use the fabrics that I would want to use in a quilt for my project bag, I was trying to think, what do I have? I don't want to go out and buy any more fabric um, for the project bags because I have a lot of fabric. Then I remembered there was a line at the very beginning stages of me um, quilting. My friend and I went to a very fun, it was a local store that is gone now. It was called the Fabric Patch, a fabric store in Montclair. It changed owners and the new owner had a, it was like a midnight shopping. So it was shopping your jammies. So we went, we got dressed in our jammies. We went shopping and there was a discount. It was probably at least 25% discount. And I bought a lot of fabric and there was considerable, about, considerable, I can't even talk about it because it was like, what did I spend on that? I bought a lot of fabric and it was Joanna Figueroa. It was the fig tree fabric line that was out at that time. And it was beautiful. And I had planned on making a quilt. And then I realized I liked more darker colors, more true, I want to say traditional, but the civil war, just, I liked darker colors. And so I was not finding a quilt that I wanted to invest the time in because I also hand I hand out the K and I hand quilt. So I thought, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do with it. And then I thought project bags. Some of the pieces are a half a yard, some are 30 of a yard, some are a yard. And I even have a large piece that I got for $5 a yard. I've got like five and a half yards of it. So I then thought, oh, project bags. And I was hoping to be part of the, oh, I forgot to say on that, the raffle. That's why you need to go watch Cynthia's um Cynthia's video there is a huge raffle where ladies and and I was too slow to get into it it was already closed by that time so I'm gonna make project bags and save them for next year to give as raffle prizes for every five dollars that you give you are able if you choose to you send a copy of your receipt to Cynthia she has all the directions on her video and every five dollars you are able to win to get put in for a drawing for a raffle and whatever lady or whatever person um, made that item will then ship it to you and it's only in the United States for domestic costs um, of shipping so I was gonna make I thought oh I've got tons of fig tree fabric I'll make all these project bags so I gathered it all and then I commented on Cynthia's that oh I'm gonna make project bags tonight she said well thank you for your generous offer but I had to close that um, a couple weeks ago so so many people offered to make things so again these will be for next year and then I, I have two so I was gonna do one to give away and one for myself. Um, so I started putting all these together. So these are the fig tree fabrics and you can see they're beautiful. Um, like I said though, they were just not, they were just brighter than I might want to have in one of my quilts now. So very fun. That was not the matching one. Good grief. Um, that was the purple. Um, and then this is one of them too. So I started doing a bunch of project bags and I just wanted to finish them up last night and I started stitching. I have my mom's, you can probably see it. I can't see it in the video, but I know you can see farther th over than I can. That's my sewing table, my sewing machine, which I inherited from my mom. Um, it, it, it is a joy to stitch on that machine because I remember stitching on it with my mom. A lot of memories tied into that. Um, but it started to skip stitches. And at first I thought, whatever, I just don't want to stop. I'm just going to keep stitching. And then I realized, no, nope, I better stop these project bags right now. I'm going to take it in next week, get it serviced. I think that's the problem. And then I have a $100 Brother sewing machine that I got that I can take, I can travel with, and then I have as a replacement when that goes in and gets serviced. So that's why these are not done, um, but they will be done. So that's what I've been working on. And let's see what else I have. I have, oh, as I watch my videos, I realize as I swallow, I make that noise. And then I'm watching my video and I'm thinking, girl, just stop that. It just happens though. It's so weird. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to learn without it. But again, if you were talking with me in my sewing room, I would be doing that. But somehow on video, I think it gets louder. Anyway, this is one of my fun project bags. But the funnest part is what's inside. And I know I already shared this, but it's got pumpkins inside. This piece of fabric was way too small to do on the outside. But what did I do? I made a little floss bag. I don't use floss drops, not yet, so I wanted to make a little teeny tiny 
plus bag, but it got a little too small. It was just a tester, so the next one I'm going to make is a little bit bigger. But that's where I keep my floss wads. That's just how I always did it when I was doing embroidery. And my little scissors, which I hope don't poke through there. Um, but that's how I keep it in there. I am working on Beggar's Night. Um, and so I've got my Beggar's Night. And how far am I? Oh, hang tight, ladies. And possible gentlemen. I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. So this is the start of Beggar's Night. Um, not even sure what I'm stitching it on because I didn't plan on, on showing. I kind of forgot about that. So um, I will put that on my Instagram. And then next week. Oh, I know. This is the cool thing. Okay. This is what it is. R, I can read it to you. R&R &R Winter Brew 36 Count um, that I got at Hollis Hands Create. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's my um, Great Pumpkin Cell. So that's what I'm stitching on. But isn't that cute little tiny thing? And I love that fabric. That was years ago. I'm sure it's not out anymore. Okay, here's something I wanted to share with you. Um, the project bags that I learned how to make were um, this size, 13 by 10. But as I put a pattern in, and this is just the matte finished, um, these are just page protectors, and I just cut off the notebook size. As I put my pattern in and out, I just kind of have to work at not scratching the edges. And I have to work at getting that over sometimes. And I thought, well, what if I just made it a little bit bigger? So that's what I did. And I shared on my last video, I think, the details of what I did. Basically, it's an inch taller. Same width, an inch taller. So that way things go in and out a little bit easier because it can, it just seems easier to work with. And then... I also added vinyl, um, just a piece of vinyl that totally fits on the inside of this to the inside to keep this piece firm because as I made one bigger, it got kind of floppy. That's all it is, but isn't that pretty? So um, what is this you ask? I know you were asking, what is this? Okay, so this is Threadwork Primitives Give Thanks. So I do like, well, I was gonna say, I do like stitching in the season and I do with other things that I stitch, but I am gonna do that now um, with this project as well. So I would like to get this done again my thread wads um, And that is my project. So see I can get it in Easier without worrying so much about the edge even though it's not Any wider somehow it just opens up a little bit bigger and then here's my other one Okay, so this is going to be another one for the great pumpkin sow uh, oh, I did it again that noise I'm gonna have to stop because you know awareness is curable this is another one of the smaller ones because that's all of the fabric that I had. Okay, so this is going to be, um, this is what this is gonna be. We have this cute little project, which is in the autumn. This was reprinted, uh, reissued, reprinted, whatever it is, it's out again. So this is the center portion of the autumn um, Blackbird Designs um, book. But I wanna make this thing on the back, it's a box. Um, I didn't realize it's a box. Isn't that cool? You can see that. And then I measured it and I am going to use this. So I had shared that Lori at Mischievous Stitches had a video that I watched a tutorial on how to turn a plain card box into a needle box. And she shared, it's awesome. Go check it out. Um, so she shared how she painted it, put Brie wax on it and put neat stuff on the inside. So I thought, oh, cool. Um, because again, my walls are pretty full. Where am I going to get more stuff? So I'm just going to put that on here after I stain it. So that's what I'm going to do with it. I swallowed carefully, so it didn't make a noise. But man, I had to think about that. Okay, so did I share everything? Oh, 38 minutes. Okay, not bad. We're doing okay. Um, let me look at my notes real quick. I just made that noise. Whatever. Um, oh. Here's something else. I am going to share something else in a minute. I realize as I'm spending more time in my sewing room um, and less time in other parts of the house, and it was so hot, I didn't even want to go outside, my sewing room gets to be a mess. I'll get it all organized, and then it gets messy again. And then I don't want to bother cleaning it, and so I'm trying to do a project, and I'm tripping over things. Or I go to plug in the fan, and I can't even get to the electrical cord. And I just thought, whatever, that's my big thing, whatever. That should be, you know what, I'm not a teenager, but still that's my word. 
And then last night I thought, enough is enough. This is a beautiful room if you would just clean it up. So last night and this morning I spent time organizing. I love plastic boxes to put things in and I, I have places that I can put things in and reorganize and you can get a lot of stuff in a plastic box and you put it up and you can see exactly what's in it. So I spent time doing that last night. And then I had some UFO projects that I realized I don't like anymore. I don't wanna bother with them. And one of them was in pieces and I just threw it away cause it was, I couldn't even use the scraps. And it felt good, you know, it, it was just like, I have a room and I wanna have it nice and usable. And I have different things that I'm looking at. I'm looking at my beautiful quilting table that I got from my mom. It can fold down tiny, but I have one leaf opened up and I have stuff spread all over it for right now. But over in one corner, I have a, a basket with all my neat little quilting rulers and it's so nice just to use the smaller ones and being able to find it, but I like them displayed there too. Then I have another basket, a wicker basket, that has a bunch of my cross stitch patterns that I am starting to kit up. That's what else I was going to talk about, the fabric that I got. So let me just mention that I, I have been getting fabric, even though I, I may not be able to find the exact fabric that I want. I am able to gather fabrics that are comparable and beautiful and they just take a little bit more effort than normal because I got into this during this time of places being shut down in response to this current virus. And so I went to Needles and Niceties in Upland, my local NN, LNS, which L is local, and um, the shop owner there, it was so fun because I was asking him questions as I'm looking at the fabrics. I'm asking questions and because I'm still learning, I'm learning so much. And he took the time to explain something to me on Zweigert, why a code number is not the count of stitches. And I thought, why did they do it that way? I don't know. I'm sure they had a reason, but he explained something to me. So now I'm a little more educated on the number 32 is not necessarily 32. I, he gave me even notes, so I'm going to look at that, but I have a whole box. Um, that I have been kitting up my patterns with the fabric choices that I'm going to want to use. And there were several beautiful pieces of fabric that I got there. And then another one I finally saw. The neat thing is when you get to actually go to a store that's open, their hours are shorter. I think three o'clock is their closing time now. Um, and they've got a lot of, they've got fabric that I love to choose from. They've got some R&R, &R, they've got Weeks, they've got Zweigart, they've got Witch, Witchel, I think that's the name. They got fabrics that I don't even know the names of those those makers yet, but I'm learning. Um, I saw Tin Roof by Weeks. It is a very unusual, it's like that, um, I guess whatever that name is, Ver Verdigas, whatever, whatever it is when that copper turns a little bit green, but it also had some blue in it. It was gorgeous, but it was a 40 count. Ooh, I'm, I'm working on 36 and I want to get to 40, so I was thinking, what can I make that I can go back and get some of that? They had a whole yard, so if you get there before I do, go for it. Um, but that was fun, so I went there and got quite a few pieces of fabric. They cut it according to whatever size you want. You don't just have to get a specific size. Um, then I also went online to traditional stitches, and yes, it took a month. Um, but they had a lot of the fabrics that I was looking for, not all of them. So I was able to get some Lakeside Linen. I was able to get some, I don't know that they had the R&R &R that I wanted. I think it was mostly Lakeside Linen. Oh no, I'm sorry, Picture This Plus. I think that's the one that they actually had. And I was able to get that, those fabrics. So I'm trying to, now I've, I put in an order. Um, I've got, I'm getting some threads and so I'm just putting things together so I can move forward. So that's what I wanted to share with you. But next time I'll show you my cute little basket with all the, the stuff that I have in the works. And I get to sit on my couch. This is my futon that I sit behind here. Oh, what else What else can you see? And, and I get to look at those projects that I have in the works. Um, this thing is neat. Um, this, we've, we've, I guess we've been needle workers in my family for a long time. I wish I had the note and I was asking my sister, who do you think this was from? My aunt and my grandmother on my mom's side were, were amazing needle point. They did needle point and they did a lot of different things. Uh, my grandma was also a knitter. Um, but I really think that this was from my great grandmother. It, my mother called her Bammy. It was her grandma. Um, and she passed away. Um, I never got to meet her. 
Um, but this is a really old, neat piece. And I have pictures that I took and I meant to put them on Instagram. I just didn't. So we'll see if I can get those done this weekend. But these are the things that I have behind me. And um, two projects that I did embroidery. This is an embroidery one. I'll show you. It's a pillow. I just stick it up there because it's gorgeous. It took a long time. I think it took the whole summer for me to do. And then down there is part, you can see part of the pillow that my mom embroidered that our applique that I got. So this is my room and I, it's my happy spot. What else was I going to share with you? Um, when I do my quilting video next, um, I will share with you some different quilts. I don't know exactly which quilts I want to show you except for one of them. One of them is definitely what in the quilt world we call it UFO. Um, but I do like whip work in progress better because it's more positive. Um, because this has been a work in progress for a very long time. And of course, of course, it has a story behind it. And that's what you'll hear on the quilting number five video. But I took a pattern. Um, the pattern was from this book, At the Quilt in the Cabin by Tony White. And I'll show you what the pattern looks like because I changed it. My sister had done it. And of course, I was going to do it just like hers. And hers was pretty much just like this. Um, and I think hers was maybe brushed cottons and flannels. It was gorgeous. Um, and then I thought, ooh, I could change it. That's what I do. Ooh, I could change it. Um, so, of course, I um, changed it. And I added a lot of things to that original pattern. This, and I will share with you. See that bird that I applicate on there? I thought, where did I get that from? And then I looked at this. This is that bird. So this is the Redware table mat will applique and I shared this already in one of my videos but it's um, primitive gatherings um, aren't those tongues will tongues beautiful um, so I already shared that already but it has a lot of different pieces and then you will see this is blackbird designs um, as far as the quilt and then there's a cat there's and there's gonna be a ton of leaves if I ever get to it um, but that one I really really want to just finish it get it done but of course I hand quilt um, so it's going to take some time. But I have, see, one thing that I, it's bothering me with all my projects, all my unfinished projects, is I also have a big collection of the fabrics that I am saving to use along with it, and then all the pattern pieces and notes, and good golly, a lot of stuff in there. So all those fabrics are out of my usual line that I would gather from. So that's where I think I need to just finish some stuff up and that would be a great one since I do like stitching in the season that would be a great one to do so 47 minutes not bad when I really wanted to do a half hour um, so again thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being part of what I'm calling my stitching family um, thank you for your amazing comments and the likes and the subscriptions and um, this gives me a lot of joy to plan and think about. I love watching others. Um, and I would love, I had a list at one time of all the new people that I was watching and catching up on. Um, and, and I'll share that next time. Do I have the list? Because I'm not going to remember if I go off the top of my head. Um, I do remember one. Okay, the Contented Stitcher was brand new floss tube. She's been on Instagram, watched hers, I loved it. Um, and then there were several others, but I cannot remember their names, so I'm sorry. So I, I'll put a list of that in there. Uh, that's what I do. I'll put a list when I go to do this of the people that I've been watching and just enjoying different personalities. Everybody has such a different personality, and, um, and I enjoy that. And because um, I am a woman of faith and because... Um, I shared my story about why Jesus Christ is so important to me on my last floss tube and it was quite it was quite an emotional floss tube and so thank you guys so much if you watched it and and bored through the whole thing um, because I really do share my heart and I share what I call is the real me and I like to get on a deep level with people so um, I kind of shared a little bit about my faith on that one and why it was so important to me so it's been, it's the last two weeks. Um, you know what, th this has just been a year of a lot of things going on. And there was just one other thing that um, could have caused my heart great trouble. And so I thought, what could I do about it instead of freaking out? And so 
pray about it. And these are the verses. I wanted to read the whole devotional because I was reading this almost every day. Um, so this is, this is a neat book called Depression and Anxiety, Prayers and Promises for Depression and Anxiety. Um, I picked this up at my church's bookstore. So I'm going to read you the whole thing. Um, so this is the one, and it's just a page on anxiety. So the verses, you will keep in perfect, the neighbors are outside, that's why Riley's barking. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust you. Isaiah 26, 3. This is John 14, 1. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. 1 Peter 5, 7. Give all your worries to him because he cares for you. Psalm 120, verse 1. I call out to the Lord when I'm in trouble and he answers me. Then this, when I read it, I thought, oh, perfect for me at this time. Lord, you know my heart and my every thought. You know when I sit and when I stand. You know my history and my future. There are no mistakes to you. When doubts and fears threaten to overwhelm my mind and body, be the peace that calms the storm. I will remember who you are, defender, savior, the good shepherd. You are my hope. I will trust in you. Even when it takes everything inside of me to choose it, I will remember that though I cannot see the way out, you see it all so clearly and you are never overwhelmed. I trust you, God. Then there's a question. What steps can you take to be less anxious and more trusting? So as I was working through yet another bump in my road, I decided um, I need to just take this to God and I need to do what I can to stay healthy mentally, physically. Um, I'm working and I have an amazing um, resource of friends and family and now I have this beautiful community here. So I just thought I'm going to keep going forward. forward. I have a word for the year. I don't know if you guys do this, um, but I love New Year's. I love looking at the past year and seeing what was good and what wasn't. What could I do better to make next year better? And I love looking forward to the future on um, a whole year ahead of me. And, and of course, I'm always thinking of all the projects that I can make. And um, I like New Year's resolutions. I see them as goals. I am a goal-oriented person, so I'm a goal setter. I want to nail those goals as often as I can. And so I like looking forward to the future. So where was I going with that? Oh, that's where I was. Um, word for the year. So my word for the year for 2020 was the word forward. Part of it was because I still had a goal that I wanted to reach as far as the healthy weight that I wanted to be at. And so I'm almost there. And so that's where I just thought, let's just finish this. That way I can wear the clothes that I bought for the weight that I would be that I've had for a couple years. So I wanted to move forward with that. I wanted to move forward with a lot of things um, in my life. And one of them was cleaning my room. At that time, my room was in here was a, a complete mess. So forward was my word. And that's now what I'm really trying to keep in mind as I have things that I want to accomplish and do, even when life, this, this year has been a year of what I call speed bumps or challenges or heartaches. Um, but I, I've, I've got a life to lead and I have a purpose that Christ created me for and I want to be able to do that. And I can do all things because he strengthens me when I choose it. And I just have to choose that. But I also choose joy. So that's my other thing to close this out is that I hope that you choose joy. Joy Nevertheless, no matter the speed bumps, no matter the challenges, no matter the heartaches, choose joy. God bless you and thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end.